Calaroga Shark Media. Happy Monday. I'm the Johnny Mac bot with today's daily comedy news. Cracked asked Anthony Jeselnik, what makes you better than your peers? Anthony said, I would say as politically as I can that I have a higher bar. I write more jokes and I fail with more jokes in order to get to that great one where some people just say, that's good enough. Like Some people are like, well, I'm just going to go up there and talk and they get a laugh and yeah, that's okay. I think some comics, they say something backstage and their friends laugh and they're like, oh, great. And they go out and they say it on stage and the audience doesn't laugh and they're like, huh, it's still a good joke. That's not the way it works. I don't think I'm more talented. I don't think I'm smarter. I just think I have a little bit of a higher bar. That's why it takes longer in between specials. I choose fewer projects because I really want to make every little bit of it great. But I think some people are like, you know what? Let's just make that wall look good and we'll ignore the rest of the room. There's a subculture on YouTube where they collect clips and then put them together and they're making just as much money as everybody else. There was one where I was making fun of Burt Kreischer and Tom Segura for a lot of the stuff they were doing, but it was very subtle. Then I run into Burt Kreischer at the comedy store and he's acting a little weird and he's just not as gregarious as normal. And I get home and I see they put together all of these clips into one thing. And when you put it in without context, it looks like I'm trying to bury the guy. And it's like, no, I'm just messing around. I think I'm just too well versed in what's going on in comedy. I shouldn't know anything about what Tim Dillon did last month. And I know so, so much. If I didn't, would I be angry? Would I ever think about it again? They also asked him about the shade he throws in Chappelle's general direction in the new special. Jeselnik said, It's more powerful to not use his name, but I can't imagine you watch that bit without thinking that's exactly who I'm talking about. He's considered the greatest stand-up comic alive right now, and he's been riding this wave of bullcrap for so, so long that I think it would have done the bit a disservice to actually say his name. But I don't know how you could watch that without understanding it. I hope that in the same way that I think that thoughts and prayers stop people from saying thoughts and prayers, I would hope that my trans bit squashes 99% of trans material. I think, obviously, make fun of these people, but you can make jokes about race without the racial slurs. That's something that I will never condone in comedy. I'm hoping that maybe people will up their game a little bit, especially in terms of trans material. It doesn't have to be this lightning rod. It, It can just be a subject... Jim Gaffigan and Conan O'Brien recently praised Martin Short as comedy's most devastating roaster, surpassing even Don Rickles. Wow, Gaffigan was on Conan and said Short is beyond a doubt the quickest, the meanest, and so funny. That's pretty high praise, wow. Jim said at a recent show at the Beacon, he literally walked out and stole the whole show, just dressing us down for five minutes, and he left. He's 75 years old, he walked out, ripped into us, left, and everyone's like, well, that's the best part of the show, Conan said. The writing is so sharp, he can do it ad-lib, but I think he also has some jokes prepared ahead of time. He can hide in the fat suit and say things like, you know, your career never quite took off now, did it? The Pitch KC caught up with Matt Bronger. Matt said, when I was a kid, I did a lot of plays and musicals. I figured that was it. I'd watch the Oscars and say that I want to do those things. Now that I've been in this world for so long, the goal is to make as much cool stuff as you can while you're here. It's not about this massive achievement. I've learned that you're better off if you just keep honing your craft, but... Be open to things. I wish I hadn't been so judgmental about stuff that I didn't want to do or didn't want to do when I was younger. I know my position in this strange universe is to be the silly one. So I'll be the silly one, and I'll look foolish if it works. There's so many ways to be creative and to express yourself other than how I saw it through the tunnel vision of a young actor's eyes. I've never really thought I'd be a stand-up, and that's been my main meal ticket. I still love it after 20-plus years, and I've been an actor even longer. I find the more you practice your art, the more peace you have in your life. These days, we're always looking for quick fixes to this simple pain of existence, but if you find something that can be an outlet for what you need to express yourself in this world and you can make a couple bucks at it, it's pretty incredible. Matt also loves being a dad. It's one of those things I never thought I would get a chance to do, and it takes over everything in my life in the best possible way and gives me an incredible perspective. It will beat the crap out of you, but it'll give you life and purpose like you've never imagined. Chloe Radcliffe has launched In Tandem, a new interview series filming comics biking through Central Park and L.A. River. She says it's like comedians in cars for less successful people. The show premiered last week with Ralph Barbosa. There's something that happens to you when you ride a bike that makes everything a little lighter, more fun, and more carefree. Because we aren't making eye contact, I think people can relax a little bit, Radcliffe says. The show uses a GoPro-rigged tandem bike from her Bushwick shop. New episodes drop Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern Time on YouTube. Virdas finds American cancel culture debates amusing compared to his experience in India, he told The Hollywood Reporter. I think the American cancel culture archetype is cute. 
And every time an American comedian complains about getting canceled, I'm like, grab a flight to India. Just let me show you something. After facing serious threats in India, Daz took a strategic approach. I didn't really milk my controversy. I just shut up and wrote a show, put the show up, and then that show got some acclaim. I wasn't doing the equivalent of crying on Oprah. After winning an international Emmy, Daz highlighted its significance for underdogs. If you're looking for an award ceremony that supports the underdog purely on the might of their content, the international Emmys are it. Mac Packer Andy Samberg revealed on his podcast that his shorts almost caused a wardrobe malfunction during SNL's Here I Go sketch with Charlie XCX. Samberg said there was a lot of debate about how high my shorts should be. After requesting even shorter shorts, he realized during dancing that I really almost flopped out. I was like, oh, no. Yikes. Brett Goldstein confirmed a fan theory that suggests Ted Lasso heavily references The Wizard of Oz. Brett told Entertainment Weekly, Ted has to go home. There's no place like home. He mapped characters to their Oz counterparts. Ted is Dorothy, Roy Kent is the Tin Man, Rebecca is the Lion, and Jamie is the Scarecrow. While the show appeared to end after three seasons, a fourth could happen. Despite Joe Coy's rough reviews, in 2024, the Golden Globes saw ratings jump 50% to 10 million viewers, their highest since 2020. You may recall Joe Coy's appearance was controversial because of this joke he made about Taylor Swift. As you know, we came on after a football doubleheader. Uh, the big difference between the Golden Globes and the NFL, on the Golden Globes, we have fewer camera shots of Taylor Swift. That's right, Scott Beckett. Even the AI can do the bit. Nikki Glaser will host in 2025 with over four months to prepare. She says, some of my favorite jokes have come from past Golden Globes opening monologues. When Tina, Amy, or Ricky have said exactly what we all didn't know we desperately needed to hear. It's live, unpredictable, and in front of Hollywood's biggest stars, who also might be getting wasted while seated next to their recent exes. Michelle Buteau will host the 2024 Billboard Music Awards on December 12th, just before her Netflix special A Buteauful Mind premieres at Radio City Music Hall. Michelle says music is just one of those magical devices that can bring people together. With me hosting, you can expect a fun party, a cute celebration, and a whole moment in a plus-size sequin suit. Her special will be on Netflix on New Year's Eve. And that is your comedy news for today. Johnny Mack will be back tomorrow. Resistance is futile. Portions of today's program were created with the help of AI. See you then.